I'm Grant Kirkhope. I'm the audio director at Big Huge Games. I'm the audio vision holder, which is a very American phrase. We don't say things like that in England. Um, uh, so it's, uh, I, I'm the guy that kind of has to have the, the overview of how I think the game should sound in its entirety, which that involves everything, from voiceover to sound effects to music to the whole thing. I kind of come up with that general scope. I applied to BHG because I, I wasn't really bothered about if it was a big company or a huge successful company or a big name. I wanted to feel that it was a place I could go that felt vibey about what they were doing and a real, it's kind of angst, and um, a place where I thought I could make a difference or make a contribution. My career to date has been, I've had quite a lot of broad appeal um, games like Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong and those kind of games, but I've never had to write anything musically certainly on the scope of this game. You know, it's a very overblown, um, gigantic world, and you know, I have to make sure that the music and the sound effects match up to that. Sound effect wise, we've tried to go for that similar overblown feel, you know, if this game's you've got a lot of combat in it, you know. <laughs> Getting that balance right is difficult. To make sure this all the spells and all the hits and all the stuff sound appropriate to the level of intensity you put into the into the sword swipe or the big spell that you cast and stuff like that, you know. So it's very easy to get lost in it and to try and just make it one step louder, one step louder, and then if it just blows up, it, just, it never works like that. A bad sound design can murder a game, absolutely kill it. If you've got a repetitive noise, like a footstep or something, or something like that, that is absolutely awful, it will drive people mad and they won't want to play it for that reason. It's a really kind of juggling act to try and get a sound that is obtrusive enough that it's all right, but not too obtrusive that it gets on your nerves, all that kind of stuff, that kind of mixing of it all and playing with it and turning it up and down, you know. And it's all about attention to detail and taking little small increments and little steps to build up this kind of big soundscape that, that, that works. <laughs> I think that as, as time's gone, gone on, the two roles are split more, so you get guys who do just sound design and guys who do just music. And I like to do both. I like to be able to do it because it gives me a break from just composing over and over again or just doing sound design over and over again. I like to get that kind of variety. And it's, it's great fun to do both as well. It's, it's a, it makes it much more, you know, go and find 50 fart samples for the, for the farting gorilla. There isn't a farting gorilla in Reckoning, but other games I've done, there, might, there probably is a farting gorilla somewhere. I've tried to really take a step up on my own kind of development to try and make myself work harder than I've I done before. So I've tried to learn an awful lot more to make the, the boss music and all the music in the game sound bigger than normal. My usual influences usually do, do end up being Dan Elfman and John Williams and, you know, um, you know people like that. You know, that, that's the kind of people that I, uh, that I aspire to. And I would probably lead more towards John Williams at the moment. I think John Williams is, is, can be easily overlooked because people think, oh, he writes those tunes like E.T. and all that kind of stuff, you know. But if you listen to his music for his fight sequences or anything else, it's tremendous, it's, ma it's massively chromatic, it's very complicated, it's all over the place. It's not easy to keep up with what he's doing because he's, he's so good at that. But when it comes to the big tune, he's right on the money with it, you know. So I, I, I have tried in my own small way uh, to um, do something like that. And I'd like to think that it sounds a bit different to other people's games. I've tried to be different with our game. It's very dark, th there's lots of big sequences that are just complete minor chord after minor chord after minor chord, it doesn't change. There's very little major chordness in, in a lot of the levels. In one of the particular regions, it's just major chords strung together, major triads, all, and that's just what, uh, to make it sound different. I write music like very sort of like that and then like that. I don't go like along and sketch it out and then fill it in. I'm kind of very like, this is four bars and that's an, and then complete that four bars and then the next four bars. I'm, I don't know if that's the right way I want to do it. It might be right, I don't know. Every composer's probably going, oh my God, he's terrible. I played in orchestras from the age of 11 on trumpet, so I do know how this sounds. That's why I think when I came to write for orchestra, I didn't find it very difficult. But you never get used to that kind of, just that, the wealth of it. It sounds so, it's such a different sensation, I mean, there's nothing like just having that 85, 90 people sat there, you know, playing your music. It's incredible, you know. I mean, this time, um, 
I've got, I use like two euphoniums extra, three trombones, bass trombone, tuba, three trumpets, six French horns, triple woodwinds, double strings, massive, you know, I just really went for the, the numbers of people and you know, you get such a massive thick sound doing that. There's a lot of love for the game. A lot, everybody here is all, you know, dedicated to try and make it as best as we can. There's no shortcuts. We're trying to just do, do it all, you know. Um, and we're going we're to live and die by it, and that's the way it should be. You know, you, there's, there's no hedging your bets here. It's absolutely, it's all or nothing. <laughs> we're trying to marry it all together in this big, fantastic package, and I, I really think we've done it, you know. I apologise for the Donkey Kong rap. It's, it's an officially on video now. I apologise for that piece of music. Um, you know, I didn't think it was uh, that bad at the time. Please forgive me. Please let me off. Somebody, please. That's it. <laughs>